so these are the um, let's talk about the essential essential conditions for the validity of a bill of exchange what are the essential requirements at the top you see like a promissory note a bill of exchange must be in writing and i have just give, given you the example of hundi you see a hundi where a person orders hundi may not necessarily be from dubai in hundi it's not essential that the the drawer must be abroad no i'm in islamabad and in, if i ask verbally my brother to pay you an amount of money this is hundi but this is not a promissory note it can't be a promissory note because my order my order you see is verbal it is not in writing and if i have or oh, i am talking to my brother and i'm telling him that look i'm sending you a gentleman whose name is karahan i have bought bhaijan i have got i have bought his uh, laptop for 50000 rupees please whenever he comes uh, to peshawar please pay him 50000 rupees so this is hundi this is not a, a bill of exchange why because the very first requirement uh, prescribed by section 5 of uh, the negotiable instrument act 1881 is that it must be in writing all right is it clear coming to the second requirement there must be an order and what does order mean meaning that the wording used in the language of a bill of exchange must convey the meaning of order if it is a wish or if it is request or if it is something else you see even if it has been drawn on a on a stamp even if all the other requirements have been fulfilled you see it is not going to be a promise or not why not because there is no order uh, how can how can one be order you see the best example the best if you are if you are for for this such a best example look at the uh, the very first word used in in a chat it says pay so this also i mean it's not necessary it would be very funny would be very clumsy as well as funny if uh, the drawer of uh, the bill of exchange says mr so and so i hereby order you i mean uh, it's not necessary any word he can use you need you see any polite word which, which conveys the meaning of uh, meaning of uh, order you see that would be enough but saying that mr drawe or my dear brother i here by order you i mean it will be a valid promise is not but it would be very clumsy and very funny it would look very funny you see so saying pay hey, assalamu alaikum brother i mean this is not a letter i no need to say assalamu alaikum or thing like that just he should start writing pay hey, mr so and so or order this much of money okay so only then it would be a valid bill of exchange otherwise not if if he has used some words which are never used in the english language for order you see that would not be a valid promise or not it would not be a promise it would not be a, a bill of exchange at all like you see where where badam gul you see where badam gul who has bought Uh, the laptop of kala khan and he is he has directed him to go to receive the money from his brother in peshawar if he is in the language in the language of uh, his uh, bill of exchange ad addressed to his brother in peshawar the drawe the drawer who is the drawer the drawer is badamgo if he says i request you to pay him five to pay 5000 rupees to badamgo this is not a valid promissory note why not because one of the essential uh, one of the essential ingredients are missing one of the essential conditions is not fulfilled and what is that essential condition uh, uh, there must be an order and request nowhere in the world the term request is used for for order okay another example 
where Badam Gul sending Kala Khan to his brother in Peshawar to receive the price of laptop, 50,000 rupees, he, he writes in the bill of exchange, I hope you will pay rupees 50,000 to Kala Khan. I hope. So again, I hope nowhere in the world is used in English language for an order. This is a, a hope is a hope. A request is a request. You see, I, uh, uh, where he says, I wish you pay him 50,000. This a wish is a wish. In all these three cases, you see the instrument uh, uh, is, not, is, not a, is not a bill of exchange. Why not? Because it lacks order, all right? So condition number two for the validity of a bill of exchange is that it must con contain an order and that order must be unconditional. I'm taking you to condition number three, leaving condition number two. It should be condition number two, but wrongly I have uh, given it uh, number three. Condition number three is that the order to pay money shall be unconditional. If the order is conditional, then it may be something else. I'm not saying that this is nothing. If uh, in a bill of if, if in the bill of exchange, while uh, directing his brother Badam Gul says something which does not convey the uh, 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 does not convey the meaning of an unconditional order, then this is not a promise. That this is not a bill of exchange. It may be something else. Okay, like. Uh, uh, where uh, my, it will be uh, the, the, a drawer while ordering a drawee, he must order him unconditionally. If he has put a slight test condition to his order, then this order or then this instrument is in no case a bill of exchange. It might be something else, but it's not, it's not a valid bill of exchange. Like example can be pay, uh, pay, pay, pay Kala Khan 50,000 rupees if he delivers his laptop. Just suppose that it has been agreed. It has been agreed that look, Kala Khan, either Kala Khan proposed, made the proposal for selling his laptop or Badam will propose to buy his laptop, whatever the case may be. You see, it was agreed by between the parties that uh, the laptop would be delivered in Peshawar by Kala Khan's brother, uh, by Badam Gul's brother, on the condition Kala Khan pays him. Okay. Uh, if if Kala Khan delivers the uh, laptop, the Badam Gul's brother in Peshawar will pay him 50,000 rupees. And the language of the bill of exchange or the language of the, um, you see, uh, the instrument, it says that pay, pay Kala Khan 50,000 rupees if he delivers his laptop. So this is a simple instruction. This is a simple instruction. There is no illegality, uh, you see. And um, people instruct each other like this, their, their agents and things like that. But this document or this instrument, even if it has been drawn on a stamp paper, is not a bill of exchange. Why not? Because the order which the drawer has made to the drawee is a conditional order. All right. The second example is pay, pay 50,000 to Kala Khan if he is sending him to his, uh, uh, his agent in Peshawar and asking his agent to pay 50,000 rupees to Kala Khan if my brother sends you this amount, if. So if is always for a, for a condition. He is sending him to his uh, friend or his uh, relative or his agent that look, I'm sending you a gentleman whose name is Kala Khan and who has sold his uh, laptop to me. I have agreed, I have bought, he has delivered to me his laptop for 50,000 rupees and I owe him 50,000 rupees, but unfortunately I don't have this money. Therefore you pay him, provided my brother has sent you 50,000 rupees. So this is also not a valid bill of exchange. Why not? Because there is order, but order is conditional, okay? 
Coming to condition number three, the condition number three is like promissory note. In promissory note, what did we say? We said that, um, you see, uh, the promise which is made in a promissory note shall be for payment of money and money only. So is the case with the bill of exchange. Here the order which the drawer is uh, uh, addressing to the drawee must be for the payment of money only. If it is for money and for, 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 uh, for cash and com commodity, kind, cash and kind, then this is not a bill of exchange. Or if it, this order is for the delivery of a property, even then it is not a valid bill of exchange. Uh, the examples are given in the slide. Um, where, ba where Badam will sending Kala Khan to Peshawar to receive something, uh, I mean to receive the price of the laptop and they have agreed that instead of uh, getting 50,000 rupees, he will get 1,000 kilograms of uh, rice. And he orders the, the drawee, his brother or agent, that I'm, look, I'm sending you Kala Khan, Kala Khan, uh, deliver to him deliver to him uh, 500, 500 kilogram of rice. So this is not, a, it's very clear that this is not a valid problem. It's not a bill of exchange at all. We can't call it a bill of exchange. Why not? Because the order is made for the delivery of uh, some property and not money. Second example is where he says that pay him, pay him 25,000 rupees and deliver to him 500, I mean 250 kg of rice. So here is a mixture of money and commodity. So in this case too, the uh, instrument is not, uh, uh, you see, a promissory note. All right, noted. Uh, moving to the next uh, requirement for the validity of uh, a bill of exchange. It shall be signed by the drawer. I mean the same requirement as in the case of promissory note. It must be signed, need, must be executed, must be signed. The drawer must sign it in the presence of two attesting witnesses. And this is, as I told you, is called in the cases of instrument. Instruments are not signed. Instruments are executed. Rather, this is a sale deed or this is, a, you see, a sale deed of, of some... Uh, rented property, etc. In all these cases, since they are instrument, they are creating the right. That's why you see they have to be executed, means they have to be signed by the concerned person in the presence of two attested witnesses. So is the requirement for the legality for the validity of a bill of exchange that a bill of exchange must be signed by the drawer and not simply signed, but signed in the presence of two attesting witnesses, okay? Um, uh, like a promissory note in a bill of exchange two, the next condition is that the drawer and drawee shall be certain persons. I mean, they must be certain, they must be known. Uh, a, a bill of uh, exchange cannot be drawn by an unknown person, uncertain person, and cannot be drawn upon an unknown, uncertain person. In both the cases, drawer, drawee, payee, all of them must be certain person. Uh, you see the next condition is that the payee shall be a certain person, okay? And amount of money payable shall also be certain. Amount of money which, an, uh, uh, which uh, the drawer is ordering the drawee to pay to the payee must be certain. If it is not certain, then uh, the the instrument is not uh, uh, the instrument is not a bill of exchange. It may be something else, but it is not. Our concern is to to look into the instrument whether it is a bill of exchange or not. So it would it won't be a bill of exchange. It may be something else. Okay. Uh, the last uh, uh, the last requirement requirement number seven or the essential condition number seven is that the amount of money must be ascertained. Uh, so if it is not ascertained, um, I have repeated the examples here where, where the 
drawer where Badam Gul is ordering his brother in Peshawar to pay Kala Khan rupees 50,000 and all other amounts which shall be due from, from, uh, from Badam Gul to Kala Khan. So no, no certainty, no certainty. Or should I tell you that this is not uh, the word which you use, certainty. It's not certainty, it's certainty. So no certainty about the money. So is the case with pay, pay Chinar gold rupees 50,000, first deducting from it any amount which he may owe me. In both the cases, since the amount of money or of the instrument is not uh, certain. That's why you see it's not a bill of exchange. So we talked about the promissory note, its essential conditions, bill of exchange, its essential condition. Now coming to the third, the third uh, negotiable instrument with which we have concern, with which the act, uh, the negotiable instrument act of 1881 deals and that is check. Uh, check, the term check is has been defined in section six. Very simple, very simple. As I told you that a check is not uh, um, something different from a, from a bill of exchange. It is a bill of exchange, but there is uh, one, uh, just one feature which uh, makes it different from an ordinary bill of exchange. In bill of exchange, you see a bill of exchange may be drawn upon some any, any natural person or any juristic person. But a check is a bill of exchange, but it must be drawn upon a banker or a bank. Okay, so let's uh, look into the wordings of the definition in section six. Section six defined is as a check is a bill of exchange, furnished. The law itself says that a check is nothing but a bill of exchange. Uh, a check is a bill of exchange drawn on a specified banker and not expressed to be payable otherwise than on demand. There are two differences between a bill of exchange and a check. A bill of exchange can be drawn upon any, 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 any person. But a check must have been drawn, the drawee must be a bank. And for an ordinary bill of exchange, it's not essential, it's not a legal requirement that it always, uh, it shall always be drawn upon a bank. Okay, number one. Number two is that a bill of exchange can be payable anytime. There are different different ways. Like a bill of exchange may, the drawer in a bill of exchange, a drawer may order the drawee to pay on presentment whenever it is presented. Pay seven days after presentment. Pay after four months. So many ways. But in a check, you cannot order a banker to pay, pay seven days after the date or two days after no, no, never. It is always payable on demand whenever you have, just suppose that Namal has given me a check today on the 19th of uh, November. I can, I can uh, take it to, to a bank anytime within the coming four months because after the four months it will get expired. All right. So whenever I take it to the bank, the bank has to pay me. Namal cannot say in the check that pay Shokat Hayat 90,000 rupees uh, after one month. No, that's not a valid check. So there are two chief characteristics of a check, which is a bill of exchange. Uh, number one chief characteristic is that it, the drawee, in case of a check, must be off, must be uh, a bank, number one. Number two chief uh, characteristic of a check is that it must be payable on demand. It shall be payable on demand, not otherwise, okay? So this is what is check. Now, if you have understood the definition and essential requirements, so all the essential requirements, all the uh, requirements which are essential for the validity of uh, 
a bill of exchange are required for the check, for the validity of the check plus these two conditions that the drawee must be a bank and it must be payable in demand it it means that if the condition uh, assumption condition for the validity of a bill of exchange are seven they they are nine in the case of a bill of exchange those seven plus these two which are in in in, in the in the definition like uh, it uh, the, the bank um, the drawee must be a banker and the this bill of exchange this check must be pay, uh, payable it is uh, it is uh, it shall be payable on demand if it is not payable on demand then this is not a check i if i take if, if i take a, a leaf from my checkbook and i write pay who is in front of me alishba pay alishba 10000 rupees but one month after that 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 check is not valid check you see i can't make it payable in the future all right so this is uh, i hope that you have understood the uh, definitions and essentials of all the three uh, negotiable instruments with which our course deals all right and uh, our time is still still i have half an hour our class ends at uh, 35 past 10 so let's now talk about the liabilities of the parties liability what does liability mean um i mean it's very difficult for me to time and again uh, refer you refer you people to my previous lectures didn't i tell you that uh, there is a difference between liability and duty recall that difference so who is liable the question is that who is liable on a promissory note naturally the one who promises you see he is liable to pay A, a promissory note is a promise for payment of a money from payment of an amount of money so who is liable liable is the prom uh, the the you see the the one who has made the promise the maker the maker of promissory note is liable but the liability uh, concerning a bill of exchange needs a bit of uh, explanation there are two people in one one is ordering and other is uh, liable to pay there was a disconnect connection i think how many students are there i don't know okay anyways so i was talking about uh, the liabilities of the parties i i told you that only let this uh, yes there are 23 participants all right uh we have a short time but i'll i'll take 10 minutes 5 minutes because i need 5 minutes for attendance as well uh i'll take uh, 15 minutes okay so who is liable and who uh, whose liability is primary and whose is secondary in a will of exchange there are three parties as you know the one who orders he is called drawer and the one who is uh, ordered the one who orders he is drawer and the one who is ordered he is drawee and the beneficiary is uh, payee beneficiary has got no and the payee has got no liability liability belongs to liability belongs to the drawer and the drawee okay but question here arises just suppose that kala khan agrees to get the money he agrees voluntarily agrees that instead of uh, asking badangul for the money he will travel and he will get money from the, from his branch and he has agreed and badangul has given him a, a a a bill of exchange take this paper and uh, ask my brother my brother will pay you 50000 rupees okay can he change his mind can can kala khan change his mind after a, after a couple of days or after one week he says look badam gul um uh, 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 i can't travel to peshawar you pay me no he can't do it he can't do it why not because he has himself voluntarily make agreed made a contract that he will receive the money from the draw e okay so here question arises that whose liability is primary and absolute 
the primary and absolute liability to pay Kala Khan is of the drawee. How it is absolute? I mean, no condition is to be fulfilled by Kala Khan, you see, to get money. And it is primary because primarily he has to take the bill of exchange to him, okay? And so far as the drawee is, uh, the drawer is concerned, he's also li liable on this uh, instrument. But his liability is uh, secondary, secondary, not primary. Primarily, the drawee is liable. His liability is secondary as well as his liability is not absolute, it's conditional. And what is the condition? The condition is that the drawee has dishonored the bill of exchange. When you take a bill of exchange, whether this is a bill of exchange or a check and you are refused the payment, if the drawee either refuses to recognize it, to accept it, or he accepts it, but he refuses to pay in both the cases, the act is called dishonor. The check is dishonored. Public, they use a word, uh, a term for that, check, check bounce, bounce over yeah. No, no, that's not, I don't know the meaning of that. Uh, the, this is called dishonor. So his liability, the liability of uh, the drawer is secondary and conditional. First, it has been, and I'm, uh, I'm sorry that our time is finished and uh,